There's no denying that Power Rangers has made an impact on life. But not just Power Rangers, also Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, and the whole tokusatsu genre as a whole has made its own mark and effect on pop culture. Our favorite heroes in spandex has been homaged and straight up parodied in different types of mediums for decades now. There's literally a whole wiki page, two wiki pages full of these type of parodies. And today I want to check out some heartfelt nods and just straight up hilarious spoofs of the Power Rangers in Super Sentai. Hey what's up everybody, Teste here and today we're talking about the many different homages and parodies of Power Rangers, Super Sentai, Tokusatsu. Honestly, this is enough content for like 3, 4, 5 different videos, but today I'm only talking about 10. This is the top 10 in no particular order. I asked this question on Twitter, by the way, some of you guys answered, so I'll be featuring some of your answers here too. Also, I'm using a new mic right now. It's the mic I use to make music on 5 Loco. Go listen to my music. And can I get an RIP to my old Bumblebee microphone? There's dust everywhere. That's the piece. Uh-oh. I think it's only right we start off with the homages because all parodies start with a little love. So let's start. Number 10, the Konin Sentai Akiba Ranger. Now this is a Japanese tokusatsu series made by the exact same people, the people who make Super Sentai Kamen Rider, the Toei Company. They wanted to make a Sentai team uh, for a series that was more adult in nature and just straight up not in the universe of Super Sentai. The premise revolves around a group of otaku, which if you don't know, otaku means diehard fans of anime. Este word of the day. And these guys live in the city of Akihabara and battle villains in an imaginary world becoming the unofficial Akiba Rangers. Now I have some personal history with this show. This is like one of the first Super Sentai series that I've watched in full, just because each season was like 13 episodes, yet they did two of them. And I don't know why I watched it at a young age. I watched it at like 15 or 16. This series like blurs the definition of like reality or imagination. There's a lot of stuff here for Super Sentai fans and just a lot of adult jokes in general. I don't know why I was watching that so young. They would celebrate the passion and dedication of Super Sentai while also combining this aspect of, oh, we're gonna make fun of ourselves too. Look at how we do our poses and explosions. Oh, we're in a quarry all of a sudden. Stuff like that. They would also feature cameos from different characters in the franchises as their respective characters in the original show or even as themselves. And they still like even add to the whole Super Sentai lore by adding new rangers into this too. Like a new member of the Hurricangers for, you know, the Thunder Squad, I guess. As well as having the original version of the Dire Rangers that had eyes on their helmets. No, no, no. They even parry the Power Rangers in there as the powerful rangers. They had their own like comic book and they were like muscly and stuff. And they had American flags on their neck and their belt. The USA. <laughs> I went a little overboard there, I'm sorry guys. And they even have a giant robot battle. It's a car. Whoa. Love that. Also, fun fact about the Akiba Rangers, they've become canon in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. In the Marvel's Avengers Tech On comic, we can see the three original Akiba Rangers in their civilian suits alongside Yoroyo Akase, which was like their scientist little mentor deal. Love that. Number 9, Super Robot Monkey Team. Hyperforce, go! Now moving back to the 2000s here, Disney owned Power Rangers. They were making Dino Thunder. Power Rangers roar! And somehow, someway, they had a little combo. American Japanese came together for a nice animated show. The one with the long title, Super Robot Monkey Team. Hyperforce, go! Super Robot Monkey Team, Hyperforce, go! It's a nice theme. The show takes inspiration from various aspects of Japanese pop culture, including Super Sentai and Power Rangers. It follows a team of young heroes with unique powers who pilot giant robot monkeys to protect the universe from evil forces. Now, even though this pays homage to a lot of other Japanese stuff, uh, the essence of it is really Super Sentai. You have a team of diverse heroes, each with their own abilities and color, fighting a group of villains. But having it in animated form, it was just so cool. They even had transformations and flashy battles, echoing the essence of both Power Rangers and Super Sentai, while giving the concept its own fresh intergalactic animated twist. And it ran for four seasons from 2004 to 2006, so the show was pretty popular. And yes, they had a giant robot too. It looks just like a robot. Number 8, Beautiful Joe. 
Also here from the 2000s, we have an iconic video game, an iconic character, Beautiful Joe. This was a video game in later an animated series, paying homage to the tokusatsu genre as a whole, but also action adventure films. The protagonist Joe gains superpowers and transforms into Beautiful Joe to save his girlfriend and battle various supervillains along the way. The series would adopt a playful, over-the-top style reminiscent of the tokusatsu shows that it's inspired from, and would feature Joe's superhero persona, complete with colorful spandex and dynamic poses, just like the transformation sequences we see in the show. Successfully blending both action and humor, it became a big thing in the gaming community. Now personally, I never played this game, I've always wanted to play it. If it's out on Switch, I'll gladly play it. I'm too busy playing Mario Wonder right now. <laughs> but I always loved just the aesthetic of the whole thing. The, the suit is slick. Even got like antennas similar to the Kamen Riders. Or the cat ears on my beanie. It, the series has become so popular, it's even appeared in fighting games too, like Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But honestly, we need it in Super Smash Brothers. When is it happening? Number 7, Super Mario RPG. Now in the game Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, we have a group of teenage warriors who become a boss battle in the game. In the Japanese version, they're called the Kaijo Sentai Ono Ranger. In the English version, they're called just the Axum Rangers. Oh no, Ranger kind of being a play on words of O-Ranger, like the series that it was airing at the time, and the words Onore, which means according to Google, one second, one second, Onore meaning in English, honor. I stay word of the day. Their pink one would heal the team as the white mage, the black one would wield dual attacks like a ninja, the red one would focus on physical attacks as the warrior, the yellow would leap into the air like a dragon, and the green would cast offensive spells like a black mage. They even got their own battleship called Blade and a special turret that resembles the original Dino Megazord. Honestly, this was sick and you can really tell, wow, the whole tokusatsu genre has gone so far, it's in a Mario game. Common question of the day though, what was your favorite Power Rangers parody? I might mention it later on in the video, but personally, my favorite was the Hello Kitty one. Maybe I'll talk about that next Halloween. Leave your comment down below and press the like button to lock in your answer. 1500 likes and I'll do more videos just like this one. Number 6, Final Fantasy XIV. Now Final Fantasy XIV has one of the latest Power Ranger homages in it with its own costumes. Those being called the Mighty Moonflower Rangers with the main member being called the Phoenix Riser, with variants for different sized characters too, with their name being based on the Warriors of Light, with their fiery accents. In TBH, the suit looks kinda like a mix of Kamen Rider Wizard as well as the Zenkaijers. They do look pretty cool, they even have their own photo spot where you can explode and pose just like on TV. This one is just super sick, also looking at it now, it does look like the King Ogers too, not gonna lie. I love this aesthetic in Power Rangers. Can we have a Final Fantasy themed Sentai team? That'd be sick. Are the King Ogers that? I don't watch Sentai, I'm sorry. Number five, Sesame Street. Never would I thought in my YouTube history I'd be talking about Sesame Street. Also, thanks for 100,000 subscribers. What? Let's talk about Sesame Street. Sunny days, the beloved educational children's program would make their own homage to the tokusatsu genre, specifically Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as it's an American show, with its Mega Monsters. Having Elmo, Zoe, Rosita, and Telly as the Super Morphin Mega Monsters. They even got their own theme song. Run from Mega Monsters! I don't know why, I have a microphone made for music in front of me and I want to sing, I'm sorry. They even got like little dinosaur names which are cute. The Elmosaurus, the Zoe Ceratops, the Teledactyl, and the Rosita Raptor. They even got their little transformation thing. They got capes, they got helmets. No one is as strong as the Elmo team. But you know what is strong? Can you guess? The E Squad. Subscribe and ring the notification bell to join the E Squad today. I love you guys so much, and you could be the E Squad comment of the day. Leave a like, comment down below, and join the E Squad today. Woof. I I love life. They even have their own little evil monster they go against called Zostick, which is kind of a combination of both Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed. 
Now what's special about this homage, parody, whatever, they don't fight like Power Rangers. They don't use martial arts because, you know, we don't want kids to do that. That's fine. And especially if this is a preschooler. You don't want a preschooler doing kicks. They'll hurt themselves. So instead, they wave their arms around while engaging in peaceful reasoning with their adversaries. AKA talking. So you know what that means? No robot. Aww. Number four, The Amazing World of Gumball. Now Gumball is one of my favorite Cartoon Network shows ever out there and they did this homage to Power Rangers. I guess more Sentai, it's pretty cool. The Bro Squad. I see that image throughout Twitter for so many years. I did not know where it was from. It's so funny that's from Gumball. Gumball and Darwin would transform in a dreamlike sequence to become the Bro Squad. Their alter egos with a fusion of iconic Super Sentai designs. Specifically, stuff from Chodenshi Bioman and Taiyo Sentai Sun Vulcan, which is some really old Sentai and it just makes so much sense for Gumball, right? Their transformation even involves a bird logo, like from Chojin Sentai Jetman. It's crazy they can fit so much, like, tribute in for, for a few seconds. They're geniuses over there, no wonder they're making another season. And the best part of all this is that, because this was so popular or something, they made a whole game about it on CartoonNetwork.com, the Bro Squad video game. I never played it personally, but it just looks like a regular run-of-the-mill bad Flash game, but it's, it's just crazy that it got that far. Bro Squad aside, there was also more Power Rangers homages. Like in the episode, the spin-offs, where the character Rob would suggest replacing the Gumball with a Power Rangers inspired show called the Techno Power Teenage Warriors which kind of sounds like Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers to me, but they did link up. They even had their own morphing call, Techno Power Activate, which also plays a little brief modified version of the Go Go Power Rangers theme. Techno Power Activate! Bro Squad better, I'll say. Number three, Fish Hooks. Another one of my favorite shows, this is one of my favorite Disney animated shows out there. I just love the water. Also, I love doing that, the, that joke sound in my videos. You probably heard it. So me. In this one, we got Milo, Oscar, Albert, and Jumbo dress up as animals and stack up on top of each other to create a Megazord-like formation. Finally, a robot, but it's fish on top of each other. Sounds like a McDonald's sandwich waiting to happen. <laughs> they even have their own animal theme names like the Tiger Shark, the Sabertooth Cat, and the Hamster Saurus. And this whole sequence of them going on top of each other paws to become this Megazord was just so comedic like hello you're fish you're in water why didn't finding nemo do that number two animaniacs now this one's probably the most iconic parody that fans love to mention i was never a fan of animaniacs but i know the internet is and 90s kids whoop de doo they dedicated a whole episode called the super strong warner siblings where the characters yakko wacko and dot become the team to defend the warner brothers studio lot the animal teams are pretty interesting with a blue blowfish, a red anteater, and a yellow platypus. I will gotta give its points because it really did went all out in this episode. Having Dr. Scratch a Sniff parody Zordon, and having stick figures wearing white jumpsuits and giant glasses parodying the Putty Patrollers. They even had a humanoid pig parodying Goldar, a Scottish coyote doing a double representation of both Squat and Babu, and a green alien parodying Finster. And there's even locations like the Command Center and Reader Pulse's Palace being parodied here too, so they pulled out all the stops for this. As well as having their own Megazord being the Warner Brothers Water Tower. What? This sounds like something I'd see in Space Jam 2. LeBron James. PlayStation. But hey, this was such a fun episode. I wonder if they did that today. Like, I, I would imagine sometimes if Disney still owned Power Rangers, they would make their own Phineas and Fur Power Rangers episode like they did with the Marvel stuff. Anyways, Animaniacs. Two claps for you. And here we go, number one, personally my favorite Power Rangers parody, it's from We Bear Bears. <laughs> also, I just noticed I got bears on my Halloween vest. It, you, I was spoiling number one the whole time. The 26th episode of the fourth season aired in 2019 and featured the cast of adorable baby bears being fans of the Ultra Meteorite Fighters and playing pretend as their own version of the team. 
And they would imagine a fourth member of this team being Silver Bear, played by the late Jason David Frank. And this guy really felt like Tommy Oliver of the team, but the reverse, initially starting good, but the heroic presence of Silver Bear would end up causing trouble for the team when the imagination go overboard. And maybe I like this more than the Animatics episode because they're babies. It's cute. It's cute seeing the baby bears. No wonder they made a spin-off of it. And having Jason David Frank pull up to the show as the Silver Bear, the sixth ranger of the team, just made it all more special. And that's not all. They do it a lot more references too, like Ice Bear playing the flute, like how the Green Ranger would play the Dragon Dagger. And the ranger colors and motifs would have connections throughout Power Rangers. Like the red ultra meteorite fighter wolf seen in characters such as Lost Galaxy and Wild Force, the pink fighter bear powers in Mighty Morphin RPM, and the yellow snake powers like in Megaforce, with the green bat powers like in Jungle Fury. And this team also, of course, has their own giant combining robot like any Megazord would. And when you get through all of that at the end of the episode, um, especially thinking about JDF and his impact on Power Rangers, you gotta give it to Wee Bear Bears. They had the best homage parry to Power Rangers. But hey, that's my opinion. That's the SD opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Dino Fuego, Monster, Instagram, Nathan Fuego. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. And of course, and as always, the awesome everybody.